Okay. Welcome everyone to the April 30th, 2021 Open Planetary Lunch Talk. I am Chase. Uh, our speaker today will be William Zeitler, who is, I believe, you can correct me if this is wrong, the world's expert on the glass harmonica, the instrument invented <laughs> by Benjamin Franklin. Probably. And, uh, and That's a short list of people and, that even know anything about it at all. So that's a pretty easy how, list how, to be the top of. <laughs> how many of them even exist in the world? Like the, just the instruments themselves. Right. Well, a fair, it was pretty popular in Germany for a while or around the late 1700s, early 1800s. So there's a fair number that have survived in museums, most of which are not playable but they're fun to inspect. So there's maybe, a, I know of about a dozen players worldwide. Yeah. Of varying degrees of capability. Say, I'd say four or five of them. So the key piece in the glass harmonica literature is the one that Mozart wrote for harmonica and quartet. So okay. maybe four or five people in the world can play that. It's pretty hard. <laughs> That's wonderful. This is already a fascinating talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do um, one on the glass harmonica sometime. That's good. <laughs> I, I would I would absolutely enjoy that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the talk today is on uh, is on uh, scoring films. I think specifically science films. This is a little out of our normal wheelhouse, but it interests me, and I'm the one who gets to book these. So, uh, thank you to everyone for being here, and thank you for William to William. And when you are ready. Uh, just go ahead. Great. Well, so thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're talking specifically about scoring pedagogical films. So I think that does fall within the wheelhouse of this lunchtime group. So let's see here. Na, 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 na. Is it working? There we go. Okay, so why bother with film scores? So in regular fi feature films, of course, like try to imagine Star Wars without the music is almost like it would have nearly, not nearly the impact that it does with John Williams' fabulous score. So in the case of feature films, the music guides and enhances the emotions where in pedagogical films, it guides, I'd argue that the music guides and enhances the attention and anything that facilitates the transfer of knowledge is a good thing. So, so, just a little quick background here. So the steps in building a film, first you've got what's called pre-production where you plan the film. So in the case of a big feature film and so forth, you're gonna figure out who the actors are gonna be, where the locations are, the script, all of that stuff. Then you've got production where you film the darn thing. So, uh, and then you've got post-production where you put it all together. And this is where the film score uh, scoring really comes in although on a big film like say star wars john williams would have already been talking to the director about okay here's what i'm thinking for the darth vader theme you know that sort of thing but on these small ones it doesn't quite work that way but nevertheless just to have an idea that these are the steps involved and also as an aside when they're when you're putting together a film of course pre-production always takes a little longer than you planned and then production always takes a little longer than you planned. Uh-oh, the release date can't change. So guess who gets to really put the pedal to the metal during post-production? So that's a pretty common thing that happens in film scoring land. So meanwhile, so there's just in terms of when I'm doing scoring, it's just, I thought I'd list a few sort of personal philosophies about it. For one thing, I like acoustic sounding scores as a one as opposed to ones that are shamelessly synthesizer. The big budget films like say Star Wars or any feature film, uh, they always use orchestras and they can be augmented by other acoustic instruments and even synthesizers. But the backbone of those scores is always acoustic. And I think doing acoustic sounding scores just makes even these little science films sound bigger budget and classier. So there's that. And then I also like to limit myself to small ensembles. For one thing, a big John Williams orchestra on some of these little science films just wouldn't make sense. Plus the bigger the orchestra, the more it, the harder it is to do. So 
it's not necessary. And then I think it's also really important that when you're building the score that you that a human being actually plays the parts as opposed to feeding the notes into the computer and it plays them back with robotic perfection that's in quotes like I think that sounds hideous so in all the scores I do I actually play the course it's on keyboard but I still it's a human being so it, it has that suppleness that a human player has so now so Martin is he's on this call he it's like hey William it's time to do the, the film so the first thing that I need is a, a near final edit <clears throat> with the time code embedded. Uh, that's partly because doing wholesale edits to music is, a, is not anything like, oh, I'll just move this paragraph around in a Word document because you've got to deal with all of the seams and things. So the closer it is to a final edit, the, just the better the whole process goes. And then so also a score is or a film is or the score is broken down into what are called cues. So a cue is one block of continuous music. So like in the case of Star Wars, there'll be some section, a lot of music goes end to end. And then there might be a period of silence where there's no, no, there's talking, but there's no music happening. And then the next cue starts up. So, for example, a bigger film that Martin and I did would be the transit of Venus. And here's what the Q sheet looked like that for that. So the Q, so the letter Q is kind of a handy short uh, abbreviation for CUE. And you can see the start and stop times of each of the Qs. So there were 16 of them in that movie. So that, if, that would be uh, minutes, seconds, and frames, what, what those numbers represent. Okay, so Martin sent me this thing, this video. Okay, so it's time for me to start planning out the score. So the first thing I'll do is in, uh, and we're going to go through that process on a film that Martin and I just did that's four minutes long, which is perfect for this presentation. It also nicely demonstrates many of the issues. So the first thing I'll do is go through and kind of identify, break, break down the sections in it, and then the kind of musical textures that I want. So in the case of a feature film, a texture might be a romantic scene, so you want nice slushy music, or a fight scene, so you're going to want, you know, that sort of thing. So just roughing out the sections. And then... Uh, once I've done that, I'll start thinking about the, the thematic material and the instrumentation that I want to use for those themes. And then I'll also go through and identify what are known as hit points, where something happens in the film and I want the music to have something happen at that same moment. And we'll see this in practice as we work through this film that we're going to get to in a second. So then also I'm thinking about what the, whether the music needs to be foreground or background. So generally, like in these science films, when somebody is talking directly to the camera, explain, explaining things, then the music needs to recede to the background. But then there's other places where nobody's talking and we're just demonstrating something happening that then the music needs to come to the foreground. So I'll start thinking about those sorts of issues. And then another little element that, that is helpful in this is making the distinction between full-fledged melodies or themes versus what I call melodic fragments, which are maybe just four or five notes long. So if something needs to be in the background, then I'll limit myself to melodic fragments because they don't grab the attention like a full-fledged theme would. And then in the foreground, then you get the idea. So now it's time to write the darn thing. And so to do that, I have two main tools that I use. The, the one is called a DAW or a digital audio workstation, which basically functions like a giant uh, multi-track recorder. So I'll have a track for each instrument. And in the case of the, these DAWs, that track can either be MIDI or actual audio tracks. So I, I don't really want to go into all of that. I'm not sure I need to, but we'll, we'll see a DAW in action here coming up. And then if I need a score, and I don't always, uh, so these, the, I use Cubase and Dorico. I've, Cubase is designed to support film scoring. Not all DAWs do. So there's some issues of like frames and whatnot that some software just doesn't support. So meanwhile, so here's the film that we're going to look at. So 
juice episode three. So on this project, as the this probe is being built and launched, Martin is filming each of those steps. Uh, and then at the end, I think there's going to be one big documentary that pulls all of these elements together. But meanwhile, here's episode three. So let's just watch the score uh, or watch the film with no score here. And there you can see the time code is embedded on there. This is how Martin and I ensure that we stay in sync. The panels have actually been sent to Italy, to Leonardo, who have placed the solar cells on top of the substrates. And now they are back in the Netherlands. And this is going to be the first time I see them here. In the so this is what Martin sent me, and he didn't worry world. about so optimizing levels at all or anything like that. We don't worry about that yet. So I have seen them in, the, in Leonardo in Italy, but not yet as an integrated vein. So this is going to be a first for me. It's an enhanced release uh, in-line deployment, which we'll uh, perform today. And that's basically uh, yeah, in, the, in, the, in, in the course of our test program, um, yeah, we need to perform several deployments to switch from a stowed to an inline deployment to perform more electro health checks uh, or alignment and stiffness measurements. The solar panels are so large because there's about 25 to 30 times less light at Jupiter than here on Earth. So here on Earth, the, all the solar panels together would create around 30,000 watts. That's enough to, to power a whole street. Uh, at Jupiter, you can get like around 900 watts out of it. That's barely enough to have your hair dryer in the lowest position. So one panel, for example, at Jupiter can power a computer, and that's, that's about it. Our team is uh, working hard in finalizing the second wing of the spacecraft, for which we are uh, now in the process of uh, performing an uh, alignment and stiffness measurement, which we'll do with a laser tracker. Juice for us was a, a challenge, a big challenge. Uh, Juice has a lot of uh, properties which we have uh, made before in, in other solar rays, environments which we have encountered, but not all together in one project. Juice is the largest solar ray we made. We have uh, lateral deployment, which we did not before. It goes to minus 240 degrees in, in uh, deep space when it's in the shadow of Jupiter. We have a high radiation environment. We go to high temperatures when we go to Venus. Um, yeah, every, everything has been done before, but not all together into one solar array. So you see these wings, you see them on the video in a deployment, and you say, wow, that's impressive. You, when you are here and you see the deployment real life, you say, wow, this is huge, this is incredible. It's, it's, I'm, I'm happy to be here and having, to, having seen the solar panels in real life. Okay, so I've got my movie. So as, as I step thinking about the overall structure of this, uh, I first you've got the title sequence, of course, but then the way that it impresses me is that there's there's three sections. There's the first one that is kind of some introductory material, long stretches of dialogue. Then, and 
Martin told me, be sure to do magic music for the unfolding of the solar panels. And of course, that's kind of the high point or magic moment of this whole little film. So we've got the introductory material, the unfolding of the panels, and then the third section I kind of nicknamed onward and upward because it has that feeling of, hey, this thing's working. Uh, let's get this thing out the door and off the planet. Uh, you'll see it, Martin, the way he's cut the film, there's lots of quick little scenes. So the whole second section or third section, I should say, has a lot more energy than the first section. So I wanted the arc of the film to work, of the score to work that way. So I went medium energy for the first section magic music for the unfolding of the panels and then more energy and maybe kind of heroic for the for the onward and upward section so let's take a look at this title sequence first this animated title sequence so here it is just so you can re refresh your memory Animation in, particularly, in particular really benefits from music because it doesn't have, even as something as complicated as that, still doesn't have the complexity of an actual real world uh, visual field. So if you think about like the classic example of this would be Bugs Bunny movie, uh, cartoons, sometime pull one of those up and pay close attention to how unbelievably coupled to the visuals the music is. I mean, Bugs wiggles his nose and the violins go, ee, 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 ee. So it's just amazing. So here I've just kind of improvised a generic piece of music that isn't particularly coupled to the animation at all. Okay, so let's break this thing down. So the thing starts with the titles, got that part here, okay. And then it's the moon split off from Jupiter. Okay, so we've got the big split here. And then we've got this silhouette of people. And then we have this animated line drawing of the probe itself. And then it opens up this aperture where we are taken then into the movie itself. So if we just let those things play and I'm not gonna stop it, you can, but the markers are still at the top. You'll see what I mean, start, split, people, probe, aperture. Okay, so here's what I've got. And you'll see that the downbeats in the music fall on the transition points in the animation. That's it. That's film scoring, where you're mapping the music to the events in the in the, the film, I could almost stop now. That's, but at any rate, we'll keep going. So here's this introductory sequence. And here I am inside my DAW, this is, and you can see, here's the tracks for each of the instruments. And one of the ways that you make things synchronized is you're doing all this craziness with tempo. So these are beats per minute out to the thousands of a BPM. And here I've got, uh, embedded, you can see the film on top of the DAW so we can track this thing. So first it starts outside and then it moves inside. So one of the tools I changes to the interior. So one of the rules of thumb I use is that when we change location that the music needs to change somehow like change key is kind of typically how I do this. And then oops, actually... dialogue is starting. So I wanna be sure that the music moves to the background. So since the movie's really starting, it needs to start in the foreground and we've got some non-dialogue. So at this point, the music needs to back Italy, off. To Leonardo, who have placed the solar cells on top of the substrates. And here we switch to in the interior of a car. So, oops, another key change here. And now they are back in the Netherlands. And this is gonna be the first time I see them here in the Netherlands 
once they are integrated into a wing, so in a typical cross shape that you see. So I have seen them in the in Leonardo in Italy, but not yet. So now we're getting ready to switch to the lab, so I sense another key change coming on. So here there's no dialogue, so the music can move to the foreground. Everyone's getting ready for work. And I, again, this whole section, I wanted kind of medium energy. Oh, one of the ideas too, is that if the first section is medium, then the, we've got the medium, medium, uh, middle magic section. And then the third section is the more heroic energetic part. That also gives the whole arc of the movie kind of a simple story to it. So kind of an energetic unfolding to it. So it gives the whole thing some direction, I think. So here we are. So even though they're talking, they're not talking to us. So we don't have to, oops, here we go, dialogue it's starting. It's an hand release uh, in line deployment, what we'll uh, perform today. And that's basically, uh, yeah, in the, in, the, in, in the course of our test program, um, yeah, we need to perform several deployments to switch from a stoat to an inline deployment to perform more electro health checks. Uh, or okay, so that's program. the first section. So here it is with the score, same thing. The panels have actually been sent to Italy, to Leonardo, who have placed the solar cells on top of the substrates. You key change. And now they are back in the Netherlands. And this is going to be the first time I see them here in the Netherlands. And One melodic fragments, because he's talking, no big melodies. So I have seen them in, the, in Leonardo, in Italy. Gonna be a first for me. Ah, uh, key change and color change because now the movie's really kind of getting underway. And there's a full fledged melody because there's no talking here. Dialogue coming up. So you can see up here where I've got the markers. And that's basically, uh, yeah, in the, in, the, in the course of our test program, um, yeah, we need to perform several deployments to switch from a stoat to an inline deployment to perform more electro health checks. Uh, or okay, so now back. we're ready for the magic unfolding of the panels. And in this one, they're really, uh, well, you'll see there's not, there aren't really any hit points. I've got to be careful about the dialogue, but just let the spacey music just underscore the whole unfolding of the panels. Didn't really need to gild the lily on this one. The solar panels are so large because there's about 25 to 30 times less light at Jupiter than here on Earth. So here on Earth, the, all the solar panels together would create around 30,000 watts. That's enough to, to power a whole street. Uh, at Jupiter, you can get like around 900 watts out of it. That's barely enough to have your hair dryer in the lowest position. So one panel, for example, at Jupiter can power a computer and that's, that's about it. So in this section one of the lines is like four bar, four beats to the bar and the others like five. So they move in and out of phase to each other. So there's beats going by which gives a forward motion, but you can't really put your finger on a, on a time signature, which is an effect that we want here. It's kind of timeless. That's barely enough to have your hair dryer in the lowest position. So one panel, for example, at Jupiter, can power a computer and that's that's about it okay so now for the up onward and upward here we go let's go through do the blocking on this our team is uh, working hard in finalizing the second wing of the spacecraft for which we are uh, now in the process of uh, performing an uh, alignment to stiffness so you see here visually this is tracking. much busier Uh, 
voor mijn tijd van die weten. Ja. Maar we willen ook weten wanneer panel 3 losgelaten wordt en hoe lang die er dan over doet nadat die andere gedeployed is. Dus dat je die verhouding van die twee kan zien. So we have some more unfolding here. So I'm thinking reuse that unfolding magic music. Because this is magic too. Juice for us was a, a challenge, a big challenge. Uh, Juice has a lot of uh, properties which we have uh, made before in, in other solar rays, environments which we have encountered, but not all together in one project. Juice is the largest solar ray we made. We have uh, lateral deployment, which we did not before. It goes to minus 240 degrees in, in uh, deep space when it's in the shadow of Jupiter. We have a high radiation environment. We go to high So we had a change of location Venus. here from the um, lab to the yeah, sky's every, office. Everything We're probably has been done before, there. but not all together into one solar ray. So you see these rings, you see them on the video in a deployment, and you say, wow, that's impressive. You, when you are here and you see the deployment real life, you say, wow, this is huge, this is incredible. It's, it's, I'm, I'm happy to be here and having, this, having seen the solar panels in real life. So also, are, uh, since this is kind of more heroic and onward and upward, we got to have a French horn in here. Ah, there it is. was a, a challenge, a big challenge. Uh, Juice has a lot of uh, properties which we have uh, made before in, in other solar rays, environments which we have encountered, but not all together in one project. Juice is the largest solar ray we made. We have uh, lateral deployment, which we did not before. It goes to minus 240 degrees in, in uh, deep space when it's in the shadow of Jupiter. We have a high radiation Up, environment. Change. We go to high temperatures when we go to Venus. Um, yeah, every everything so has been done So this guy coming before, up at the end that goes, wow, he's like solar. really displays some emotion about this. So I really wanted to do something to take advantage of that. So you'll see that the French horn comes in right when the guy looks at the camera, sharing his there. So then here's the whole thing all put together. Let's see how this compares to your experience when you saw it at the beginning with no music. Yeah. The panels have actually been sent to Italy, to Leonardo. We have placed the solar cells on top of the substrates. And now they are back in the Netherlands. And this is going to be the first time I see them here in the Netherlands once they are integrated into a ring. So the typical cross shape that you see. So I have seen them in the in the Anado in Italy. But not yet as an integrated ring. So this is gonna be a first for me. Deployment to switch from a stowed to an inline deployment to, to perform. 
for more electro health checks uh, or alignment assistance measurements. The solar panels are so large because there's about 25 to 30 times less light at Jupiter than here on Earth. So here on Earth, all the solar panels together would create around 30,000 watts. That's enough to, to power a whole street. Uh, at Jupiter, you can get like around 900 watts out of it. That's barely enough to have your hair dryer in the lowest position. So one panel, for example, at Jupiter can power a computer and that's, that's about it. the second wing of the spacecraft, for which we are uh, now in the process of uh, performing an uh, alignment and stiffness measurement, which we will do with a laser tracker. Juice for us was a, a challenge, a big challenge. Uh, Juice has a lot of uh, properties which we have uh, made before in, in other solar arrays, environments which we have encountered, but not all together in one project. Juice is the largest solar array we made. We have uh, lateral deployment, which we did not before. It goes to minus 240 degrees in, in uh, deep space when it's in the shadow of Jupiter. We have a high radiation environment. We go to high temperatures when we go to Venus. Um, yeah, every, everything has been done before, but not all together into one solar array. So you see these rings. You see them on the video and the deployment, and you say, wow, that's impressive. You, when you are here and you see the deployment in real life, you say, wow. And there you have it.